Once more, the streets of North Valyria began to overflow with people, to the point where even the most bustling cities of Slaver's Bay began to appear poor, every street overwhelmed with squalor. Usually, it were only the slaves that lived in such conditions, but now even those of wealth found themselves struggling at times to house all of those who had coin for housing. Soon, it was clear, people kept coming from wars in Westeros, wars in the Free Cities, wars even in Yeti. People ran from the Dothrak hordes to this so-called Empire of Gold, as outsiders called it. Many sold their lives to buy transport to North Valyria, only to arrive and find no homes, no jobs, no wealth awaiting them. People came in hope of dreams, only to find those dreams faded away as they soon starved in the streets. Prince Aemond, now approaching his age as a man, came to a conclusion, one that he presented to his father in an attempt to show himself as a suitable heir. The uncolonized regions of Illyria were still claimed by the Emperor through military forts, and many surveyors believed the lands would be ready for development, so long as there was a military and medical presence. In order to fund these lands, however, they should be auctioned. The many rich merchant houses and families of Illyria, Mantaris, Tolos, and the capitals of Marine, Yunkai, Gis, and Astapor, they would all be granted a chance to bid on land. Whoever was the highest bidder and had the resources to build such a land would be granted it and the title of the region, the sale of both duchies and individual lands being considered. When the Emperor heard the idea from his young boy, an idea which had once been pitched to his grandfather as a solution to overpopulation, unlike his grandfather, he jumped to the idea and began to expand it for the original day was crass, it was mostly the idea of a young child. But he would make it work, he would make it perfect. First it came the matter of the existent lands. The colonies in Draconis and Zeklos, currently under the Crown's care, were accelerated at some considerable cost to the Crown, in order to bring them to completion, so that they could be safely granted. With this, House Sagon, in tribute to Tristan One-Eye, who had faithfully served his king and his emperor for many, many years, would be granted the duchy title of Draconis to his son and his continued family, and told to begin work on Ubalesa, a flat land which held good potential for growth and fertility. This would put them right on the border with Atlantis and their settlers. But the emperor didn't concern himself with that. House Paimanion paid 800 gold to secure the Isle of Cedars, one of the most crucial regions. These islands, consisting of two decently sized large islands and a small collection of smaller ones merely capable for outposts, would be crucial in the continued upkeep of Slaver's Bay. With these colonized, the Emperor would control the entryway into the region, having full power over any ships which would trade with the cities, and giving their navy far more power. The offer was accepted due to the family's links with Mir and Pentos, region which the Empress sought to increase trade with, and due to the Lord's loyalty to the Emperor in past. The smallest of the two main isles, named Elos, was granted a military station and some more groups of early settlers to aid in its construction, with the intent it would serve as the isle's capital due to its far stronger and more fertile land. House Belmanis once the Lords of the Blackliffs paid 1,200 golds to be granted the High Lordship of Chados, a ducal title worthy of some respect, if it could be built. The family themselves were quite large and well connected, having multiple branches which spanned across the cities, and Valyrian blood. It was the Emperor's intent that all places should, in some way, remain in Valyrian hands. Therefore, they could use their connections to hire a private military force, one which was able to quickly secure a landmass from which the first cities would be formed. It would be expensive to upkeep, but if they could afford the price to buy it, surely they could afford the price to keep it stable. 
The lands within the duchies, too, were auctioned off for good prices, earning the crown a considerable amount of gold. The emperor decided to use some of the money collected to begin colonization of his own, a region of the Port of Sighs, which he chose to overlook and manage. A good port on the Sea of Sighs, and also an interesting place of Lyrian architecture that, when grown, could serve as an entryway into the lands which came beneath it. The Emperor did not wish to stop there. It was his intent that they should actually colonize further. They should claim Oros, the coastline of the Nile Sea which marked Valeria's lands of long summer. Without telling his council, he commissioned one of the Royal Guard, Sir Swifton of the Black Sea, to lead an expedition into the region to ascertain its viability. He never returned. After months, it was clear that Valeria had claimed another victim, and when the council heard, they prohibited further expeditions of Oros until supply holds in the south could be made, so that it was at least feasible. Swifton's family was told he had died in service to his emperor, slaying some assassin, or rather, it was important to keep some things a secret. During the same time, a question came out of the ruins in the region, specifically the lands of Old Geese. It was decided that the Duke of Nugis had done enough to prove his worth, and a final task would be granted to him. House Aenor was granted 2,000 gold of the money that had been earned to help construct Geese, and he was granted the kingdom title of New Geese. Should this old city, these ruins, fail to grow into something worthwhile, the kingdom title would be revoked, for Aenar had failed in their final task. It was a challenge, but one that would certainly be worth the risk. The final problem in the plan, however, came from Volantis, who would claim much of Valyria themselves and weren't happy with this sale of lands, lands which should be divided, surely. However, Emperor Jahiris assured his council and his son that there would be no bother with Volantis, there'd be no problem, for the Emperor had been planning to pacify Volantis for quite some time, and his dragons were hungry for war. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, where we are playing as Jahiris the Mad, apparently he's mad now, of North Valyria, this mighty empire of ours. And Cinder, just look at the amount of kill children we have. We are very, very strong. Not to mention we have other lines of Cinder equally strong. I mean, look at these kids. The Cinder name grows strong, but we have new names to take a note of in the region. Lord Daeron, uh, another bastard of the Stepstones and the brother of Baelor has been given a small province, but he, his brother, has been granted the kingdom on the promise that he focuses efforts on Geese. He's been given, a, been given a loan to begin work on a new Geese, or old Geese rather, in trying to restore it. And should he fail to restore it, this kingdom title will be reassessed, so to speak. But as you can see, we have done a lot of sales, so to speak. You know, the his grandfather, Rhaegar, was very against the sale of titles. And it's why he held all of this himself. And uh, there's merit to it. Uh, Aemond obviously didn't have much time, but he too held to his titles. But Jahiris isn't the smartest. We've already been over this. He's not the greatest. And he does trust in his advisors. So when his advisors tell him that selling titles will speed things up, he agrees. As such, there have been some sales. Firstly, I don't even want to try it. Pain Minion. Pain Minion. Or Pain Minion. We'll go Pain Minion. It's like French. Have been granted the Isle of Cedars. Uh, they used to rule the Black Cliffs before they were kicked from the region, but they have remained a wealthy family in Cinder. They helped fund the temple. Which, actually, I could do with upgrading again, because, like, I've not upgraded the temple. <laughs> and I feel very bad about that. Definitely something to consider upgrading. Uh, but they, using their wealth, have been given these isles. And they have 
one advanced colony and the others are normal colonies due to their wealth, which means that they will be able to hold a couple men, but tax-wise they are not going to be earning much money at all. Yeah, very little money. Uh, over here in Jados, the Belmin... Sorry, the Belminios are the ones who used to own the Black Cliffs. Oh, game the Fuse. Belmonds used to own the Black Cliffs. Uh, and technically Demon Pass, before they were kicked from the region. And they were earning a little bit more as they actually had enough wealth that they have two advanced colonies, although the Otterlands here are still a normal colony. Which also means they should be able to field more men, so these guys will be an actual notable part. And then, by selling these titles, we have gained wealth to begin work on the Port of Size for ourselves. This is going to be self-managed by us. It's part of a new kingdom down here. The Kingdom of the Lands of Lost Summer. Which is a region we're definitely going to be expanding into. But the question will be Valantis. Valantis owns all of this coastline and really to appreciate that they are taking it themselves. But I would also very much like to secure Valyria. So our eyes will turn to them possibly this episode. Uh, another note is House Sagon formed by Lord Tristan One-Eye, which, what a life he had, what an incredible character he's been. Tristan One-Eye, his son, Jibero, has now inherited this region, and through this inheritance, he has been given care of Ubelessa, as Dragon is completed, so Ubelessa will be a focus that he will have to work on. As for Crown Focus, our Crown Focus has been a Mantaris, which I could invest in. I have leftover gold from selling the titles. But, I'd rather start building some of these Valyrian architectures. Because these provinces down here, we're entering the Valyrian, like proper Valyrian ruins. So there's quite a lot we can build there. Summer plantations could be very nice as well. And Mantaris. We will build them a militia ground. Spend a bit of money. So we have... A lot of men ready, and I've seen that I should try subjugating these regions. I've seen some people say, quite rightly looking at history, that these lands here weren't actually freeholds. They were like tributaries or vassals who swore fealty because they were worried about uh, geese and calf and obviously the regions of their north, which if they'd be willing to accept subjugation, I'd let them keep their lands. So these Hesh, La Chavel, and Sepagar, and Cossack are ones I want to continue. Hazdahan, obviously, uh, they're about to lose their war, but we still have a treaty with them, and I don't want to get Truce Breaker. Valantis! <laughs> what do we do about Valantis? Their armies are back, they've started to restore them, but, and obviously they have a wealthy treasury. Would they accept subjugation? I don't think so, I think they would fight. And I don't know if they'd call a coalition, because they could call in Mia, Pentos, Bravos, all of these. But I think Valanta should be our target, because then we'll have full control over the expansion in Valyria. Which is our goal, of course. I want to expand this way. Once we secure this, we'll have direct foot traffic trade with Lys, Mia, and Pentos, which we can start leveraging. Because I don't want to conquer this region. This region, I think, is way too far. This is ages away from where we want to be. Valantis is kind of the furthest we could administrate. And I'd like to unify the culture. You know, these guys are all SRC Valyrians. I want more SRC Valyrians and I want to unify the culture. So I think it's time. Elves, obviously we also have the Jure claims we can go for. But... I think we go for a Dragon Conquest. And... Let's start raising some armies. I might keep my army in Illyria proper. Uh, get the boats up. Let's unite these first and then see if I need more than this. So there's a chance they'll just back down. It doesn't seem like they will, okay. Okay, let's, let's raise our armies then. And the culls are here. Where did they land? Is that... Uh, I was about to say, I fought that. 
It looks like it's them? No, it's not them. Is it actually these guys? It is. 125 men. I don't think threaten me that much. Get these Mantaras as well. 20k. I want to be leading the central column. Actually, no, it makes sense I'd lead the rear guard. Maleris in the middle, wife on the side, so we have two dragons in this army. Maleris is kind of our best commander left, which isn't great. Can I get a new... How good is he? He's still not great. I'd love if we could get like a proper skilled fighter to lead us, to lead our armies again. There's a good chance that may not happen. I'm worried that they're just going to land their armies on Illyria again. Because they just keep doing that over and over. I do eventually want to move our capital just because I'm tired of the AI killing themselves on Illyria. In all honesty. Let's get to old Volantis. Volantis is so interesting. The city split across the river. I kind of... If you see my CK3 series I've just started here in Pentos. I kind of imagined a similar concept with this crossing here. Obviously Volantis is a larger crossing because it is the largest uh, river and the largest bridge crossing over it. But this idea that one side is, is populous and wealthy and the other side, for you know, which was built to accustom old Volantis, is still so poor. Oh, happily take that money. Take them into house arrest. And oh my god, I'm trying to get, they're trying to kill me again. Try to sit in my bed that someone is holding me down. It's the burly arms with the trusty baby face. Yeah, this, this event again. Who's trying to kill me? Do I know the scheme? Don't know this scheme. That's worrying then. I don't have a master of whispers, so that probably plays into it. Um, you want scheme because that will discover schemes as well. Yeah, get this war council up, and then obviously when we. I'm no longer at war. We can lower the council. Okay. Landing right on top of them. They try to sneak past me, which is never going to work. Is it the red? Let's sit on the rest, the red, uh, red temple for a time, because we are. Oh, I could become... Yeah, Yunkai. I shot my, my nephew. So, New Geese is an interesting one because they are technically Faith of the Seven because King Baylor, or Baylor himself, obviously, was raised in the Stepstones by Elena. And Elena was... She's long gone now, but Elena grew up in King's Landing. So, we do have Faith of the Seven within our region now. Do I want R'hllor within my region? I'm sure I have R'hllor worshippers somewhere in the region. But it is not my intent to give them the time of day, in truth. Hmm. Well, you can obviously spare the gold. I haven't re That's stupid because I haven't actually removed him from the council. Did he even raise? No, he did raise, okay. He's, so he's only been removed because he raised up. Valerian is getting better with the sword. Okay, we've taken the temple. That will stay on it a bit longer to take the second part of it. Interesting, Aemon, it's a dutiful commander. Yeah, he's not great. Let's be real here. He has literally no diplomacy. He's a terrible diplomat. Not very smart. Not slow, he's just not very smart. But he's a great warrior. Finish my ambition. Uh I could forge a bloodline. Uh I don't I mean that we have so many bloodlines already. Let's go with win a war for now. 
what to do with Eamon then? Eamon's going to be interesting, because obviously he, his wife will be Visenya. So that marriage should trigger soon. Oh no, they, they, they already got married. Oh, he unseated it that quick. So those who are getting married should be very useful to us. Maybe I should put him in charge of my armies. Well, I like my nephews becoming my ally. He is next in line, right? Yes, he is. That'd be good. It'd be good to be friends with young guy. I mean, I'm friends with his father. I love having these families with still the relationships. What I do wonder about... So yeah, is he, Yung Kai is the one who's like committing his forces as well. I think we'll have to re not we'll have to, but I think we should reward Yung Kai after this. I'm not sure what I'm going to reward him with. Uh, of course, I'm stressed. But he's been so loyal for one of the smallest kingdoms. He needs some sort of reward. Hmm. I can definitely give him gold or like build a city for him. Building a city might be very useful for him actually. Take back old Valentis and that should be it. War has also arrived. Ooh, ruthless or honourable? I don't hate ruthless. Oh no 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 no! Oh no! Ruthless died. He who rose once rode upon majesty died at the age of forty-three. From horrific burns. This is burns that left him with the mask years ago, finally took him. So we now had Lord Paramount of Bathan the Chaste. That is an interesting. He's a genius! Wow, wow, wow. Very good stat array. What about his wife? She seems good. Hopefully, he can birth some good kids in because he seems like he's got great potential in him. Does he have a dragon? He does not. Nor does he have an egg. Let's see if he's going to try and ride one then. Ride his father's dragon, maybe. Oh no, did it? I don't think his father got a second dragon, did he? After, um. Majesty died. No. Once Majesty died, that was kind of it. For Marine. Which I can't blame them. It's hard to get one dragon, let alone a dragon of his size again. Try and get diligent. The 18,000 Valyrian men about to claim. Oh, Big Silver, you angry girl. But it makes sense that dragons would be able to siege Old Valyria. So Old Valyria is built up of... Mm, take him into house rest. I want to take, before I... I don't want to end this war just on 100%, I want to take a bit. Especially if Astapal's coming to join us now. It makes sense that we want to subdue this region. They say Ke uh, Kekopis is exp has escaped from the dungeons of Daeron of the Black Cells and has built a lair in New Geese. So this is one of Baelor's brothers. Does Baelor himself have a dragon? No, but one of his brothers does. Who's currently his heir. Adoras, I, I did all this saving. I forgot to do one quick save edit. So let's quickly pause because as I said, I was going to give him a wife. So we're going to quickly give him a wife. So one second. There we go. I said we were going to give him a bride, and Danis seems the best choice. She'll three more years, and she'll be of age. So we didn't lose out too much by me forgetting. And it seems like he didn't want to marry himself otherwise. So <laughs> it's kind of forced me to. I mean, I don't know why he wasn't marrying by himself. Hopefully, this will make him realize that marriage is probably a good thing. Let's siege these, the rest of this down then. Um, obviously we now have... Uh, season 2 of House of the Dragon out. 
little bit hit and miss. I'll admit, little bit hit and miss compared to season one, which I felt really sort of got it all down. But I can't blame them. I can't blame them for it being a bit of a struggle. I think Blood and Cheese was awful. I could write a whole. Well, I need to have a tiny bit of gold. Who are you fighting? No, I don't care. But I do feel you know I could I, I could write a whole book about why I hated Blood and Cheese, and I also felt the Eric fight wasn't great. The cargo fight could have gone a lot differently. Not bad though. I understand why they did it the way that they did it. I'll put it that way. However, I still enjoy the show. It's nowhere near as bad as like season 7, season 8, season 9 of Game of Thrones. There's a lot still to enjoy, and I'm still excited to watch every week. It's just not hit the second season as well as like The Bear did. Although The Bear's hitting its third season well, so make of that what you will. The Bear's just The Bear. Uh, for the dowry, send the customary dowry. Right, let's take out these armies, and then I think we'll call the war. So, so we've already won it, but I just enjoy taking the war a, little, a step or two further, you know? Rather than just immediately accepting victory. Because it's very easy to force a victory. Ooh, Milano has... Who's Milano? So I always end up clicking the wrong one. He's losing so much money. Why does it, are they all losing money? Am I being silly and I've put them in a position where they'll forever lose money? It says he's making money, but he also isn't making money, so. Maybe I need to constantly like pay them. Like did these guys earn money? They do. I don't know why you don't. Oh, I only sent him 15 gold. I don't think that's going to fix his debt problems. Because his vassals are earning money. Other than this one in the Ojo lands. No, he is earning money. Just this guy is getting himself in debt, apparently. Curious, curious, curious. Well, let's call this war. And we have a new vassal. And reappoint the old council. Make sure there's no gaps. Wonderful. I'm going to take these armies back to Mantaris and then take them down. Let's see. Recently I noticed the pitiful state of my daughter, Princess Ray. Just informed that the cause of her aches and fatigue is a case of the flu. No. Oh. How old is Ray? Eleven. Oh yeah, we'll get this one right now. Take a decent education in... Keep up the faith learning, I think. And you want to marry her, would this be a second wife? It'd be a third wife. I'm married to my aunt. Both of my aunts. Um, I did say I'd reward him. So, fair enough. I'll consider that the reward. You want the Lordship of Mantaris? No. I'm keeping these four forever. There's all class and port of size I may give away later. But these guys are now directly under me, whereas these guys are still under... Interesting. That's such a weird way. Why is he under me? Also, we now have this completely disconnected splodge. Which isn't helpful. I hate disconnected splodges like that. Right, army can rest. And the ships can stand down. We need a new ambition. You want your bastard son to be legitimized. I shall allow it. 
Let's see. Forge bloodline. Paragon of virtue. Exalted amongst men. Adopt a lifestyle. Build a war chest. Or see the realm prosper. Hmm. Peace for five years. Or I can just... I'm very close to this one already. So let's give this one a go. I'm going to keep monitoring the money situations of both of these carefully. Because they shouldn't be losing this much money. It must be from events. It must be he got an event and he paid the event. That's what I'm thinking. Because I did give him base money and he tore through that. Like, he had an extra thousand he's torn through, so... Clearly the events are expensive. But that's to be expected. Uh, let's get some more outposts built. We don't really need ships. I think we're... Over the amount of ships that we will need. Are you able to fight this? Seems like you already are fighting it. He wants to rival his... Why do you want to do this? Hmm. I can banish him to drift market things. I'll allow the deal. Damn fool. I'll say that I'm not allowing it, and I'd more say that he... doesn't know about it. You want to remove a lot? No. Don't know if you know this, he is my uncle. And as such, I'm keeping him. In this position of power. Whether they like it or not. I will keep the... Because realistically, this wouldn't be one triarch. It would be the three triarchs, or the multiple triarchs. Because that's how Volantis is ruled. I don't think they've ever had just one triarch. It's part of the name. Ah, and here comes the illness. Cancer. Oof. My treatment's not doing anything. Good thing Amon's of age, because... The colonnade Teleria is under siege by forces led by Stormzinger Brickio. The defenders were to capitulate, let the fledgling survive, but there is a chance a colony may fall. Yeah, I can't really do anything about this, because it's a war he's fighting. Oh, because it's a dual war. That's why. Ugh. Okay, we lost a fever. We don't have cancer as a trait, so maybe we're healthy. Fingers crossed. The young race seems to be developed very strong religious sentiments. Kind or zealous? Zealous makes sense. We've been training her in religion for so long. It's like... Well, congrats, you won it, and then you immediately lost it. I have to save up money to pay for this now. What a dumbass you are. I should have just given it to him. That is my fault. Because it is the jaw his. Yeah, this is going to cost a lot. I have to save up a bit, because I think it's a thousand, isn't it? Yep. I may sell this one, and then force him to take the vassal, but I don't want Ifelix to get lazy. 50% chance of wrath. Mm. This would give extra martial. Let's give this a try. Didn't work. Okay. Because lazy affects the size growth, which affects the martial. My greatest warrior, Meliris Magi, has died, causing a dragon Quicksilver to fly into a rage and establish a lair. Well, I have to hope somebody will take up. Whilst chained up in the dragon pit, Quicksilver is observed to suffer frequent bouts of uncontained fury. She's constantly struggling against her chains and has burnt through and maimed many of the guards. I'm going to release her. If somebody wants to be brave enough to try and tame Quicksilver. It might be one of the biggest dragons left now, actually. Let's have a look at the... Show me the dragons. 
Quicksilver is 76, 48 Marshall. White Claw's about half that age. There's too many Dragon Riders for me to actually check Dragon Riders, which is a problem. Baxlix is 49, which means Iflix is a lot younger, yeah. I don't acting at my own lords, please. Especially when you're going to cost me that much gold. <laughs> like, we could sell some slaves to get some gold. But now we don't have the slave runner, so we need to. So I don't have a treaty with you, do I? Why would it only be for that one province? It's so weird. Let's do a slave raid then. And by doing that, I mean that's the marine do of it. Oh, what's happened here? Um, we'll get slightly better than standard. Oh, so you just didn't... Why are you under marine? You should not be under marine, you should be under yunkai. Huh. Fix that then. Because that's not helpful. 6,000 men! I think they still have it though. Probably be a dragon or two in that army. <laughs> oh, and the war's immediately over, before there was even actually that battle. He's an education focus. He's not that great at anything. But he's too fussy for diplomacy. I think we still give it a go. And I demand to retract the vassalage of him. He'd accept it, okay. And then we'll give them back to you. There we go. Restore Yunkai a bit. Don't know how Marine even took that over. We need new, another new ambition. I don't think I can go for war. Because I'm... Or see the round prospect because I want to go to war with these two. Hmm. Try, let's try and get a hobby. That's what everyone does in their later years. Pick up hobby or two. Who has a claim on Hesh? A bunch of people. I'll just Dragon Conquest it. But everyone rises. Oh, and they, they surrendered. You want me to help you kill your rival? Sure, son. <laughs> He'll keep his lands because he's like a tributary, almost. Hmm. He'll almost definitely say no. Or he'll almost definitely say yes, probably. Another slave raid. So one I'm interested in is Summer Isles, because I've been thinking, what if we go for a colony? And originally I was thinking Stepstones, but that's barely a colony, let's be real. A colony down here could be a lot of interesting expansion, especially like just taking an island at a time. Like we could do quite a lot of this region, especially because, you know, we take the North Isle and then we just slave raid all the South Isles for a long, long time to get a whole bunch of them and then slowly conquer them at the same time. I don't know, what do you guys think of that idea? Give, leave a comment, let me know what you think about uh, the idea of a colony in the Summer Isles. Is it worth it or not? It's, I imagine it'd be 
a hard area to hold. I'll admit that. I feel like all my money's being spent on dowries now. Oh good, he died under suspicious... <laughs> Stop letting in smugglers, god damn it. Start swaying you a little bit, because you're the only king who doesn't like me. Other than, I don't imagine Volantis hates me. Oh, wonderful news. Oh, and, I, and my wife's pregnant too. But Visenya and Aemon had a... Did they have a kid in it? You had a... So... How did this even work? Okay, it's a bastard, so she just hid on him. Ooh! Ooh, of all the people! I did say, who could they get if they couldn't get Majesty? Well, apparently they'll get bloody Quicksilver. Huge, huge power move by him. That's going to put him in a really strong position. I'll be just to see how that works for him. And he hates me. <laughs> Could never get him to keep liking me. The bastard of Illyria. Is he? Who does he actually rules? So he rules the city. We'll do nothing for now. I just saw myself. There is a scheme against me, isn't there? Replace Emperor Jahiris. You what? Let's end that plot. No one's replaced me. See, on his behalf, I can pay things, which is good. I was hoping I'd be able to. See, I can pay things on his behalf, at least. Which will hopefully lower the cost. He's also infirm. Must have picked that up very recently. Let's have his uh, son, though. Hopefully his son will be... <sighs> I really, like, I hope that at least one of them will be able to do even the most basic of things. Are these no longer colonies? Are these actually upgraded? Yeah, these are no longer colonies. Okay, so maybe they're not complete idiots. Looks like he's actually been able to build two into normal full provinces. It's just you who sucks. <laughs> and then obviously this one failed because he decided to conquer it. My daughter... Is it a, a hatchling? No, it's not a hatchling. Yeah, my aunt's funeral is over. So it's not a hatchling, it's actually... A dragon she's tamed. Impressive. Right, I'll have to find funding for these two. Imagine I may have to sell some, some slaves, perhaps. We'll see if I have any nobles who'd be willing to buy land. Because the key thing is owning these islands is we control the full entryway into Slaver's Bay. Like, we control all the land mass as well, but... If you were to ask the Emperor, does he care about this land getting attacked? No. Does he care about the Lantis getting attacked? No. Does he care about fully protecting Illyria? Obviously. This doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. A new son has been born? Hmm. Gaiman, Arian, Nagel, Jahiris, Vagan. It's a bit Valeria, a bit Valantian to me. I've delisted the advice of a group of bannermen led by Lomar. I've you relinquished your title. He only has geese. Doesn't work like that, buddy. We're taking this back. Only a Valyrian may be king. I 
And now we're giving you this back, and you're not losing it again. You moron. I, if he got taken over by another Valyrian, I wouldn't step in. But I am not having a non-Valyrian on any of my kingdoms. That's how we're going to show our dominance. Also, Dane's better start having a kid soon. Because otherwise that line's going to completely die out, and I'd like the A in the line to continue. Hmm. My 13-year-old child is having wild parties. Uh, like charitable. Hopefully that'll split. Give him a decent education and diplomacy. No, it seems like stewardship or marsh would be best. Either of these advance? No, that's still. He's not been able to advance either of his main ones. Which is not a good look for him. Goodness. I feasted my dinner, and yet. Poison! My body is growing numb. Somebody! Please help me! Cyrax! Murdered! And if Lix has run and fled away. And we, all the realm, should be invited to my father's funeral. Gonna have to sell slaves again to afford it. That's how it works. Well, what an interesting situation we shall leave ourselves off with at the end of this episode. A successful conquest of Volantis. Growth all over, although some colonies have already failed. Others have already blossomed. We'll have to continue our investments in this region. Very expensive investments. But my father has been slain in suspicious circumstances. Poison to his lips. And now the question is, who would be mad enough to murder the Emperor of Valyria. Questions must be asked, and I assure you, Aemons II shall be the man to answer these questions. And he won't stop until he's found the man behind this. Thank you guys so much for your, all of your support on this series. Please do leave a comment, leave a like. Let me know what you want us to do next. What should we do? about the murder. What should we do about the Summer Isles? And more importantly, what should we do next? Thank you guys so much for all your support on Patreon. Please do keep it up, and I shall see you guys in the next episode of House Cinder. Until then. <laughs>